what you're giving, that's how we live it Don't be mad at the system, it's simply how we've existed I hear a lot of people talking like they politicians And choose to be an accountant because it's safe in a business Not because they... Hello everyone, and welcome back to the 12th episode of the Joshua Covington Show I'm sitting here with my special guest, West Craven High School alumni The best female basketball player to ever walk through West Craven High 3,000 points she had the best team with the best record, 30 and 1 at West Craven High. She earned the scholarship to North Carolina her eighth grade year. That was her dream school. And now she's overseas and she's back home because of the coronavirus. Jamie Cherry, how you doing? I'm good, good. How yes, you sir. Doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, well. sir. So how you been feeling? I've been feeling good, you know, just coming off of a season overseas uh, due to the coronavirus. Yeah. I'm um, just trying to stay, you know, healthy and Continue to work out, get ready for it whenever the next uh, season comes. Yeah, man. So you're in this beautiful home, man. This yes. beautiful home, and I know you grew up with your mom and dad. So right. tell us, tell us a little bit about mom and dad. Um, you know, my my parents they worked all their life. They worked hard. Um, they definitely provided a loving home for me, a great home that I grew yes, up man. in. And um, me starting to play basketball when I was younger. I know mean, my parents supported me um, all the way through provided for me, um, doing what a lot of parents probably wouldn't do, yeah. and, um, you know, just giving me everything I needed to succeed in basketball. Yeah, man, so you know that some other kids don't have two parents, but you coming home to two parents and they supporting you and having your back, so tell me how that was growing up, not, not just then, even now, they, they still have your back in certain ways. Right, I mean, obviously that was definitely great when I was younger, but especially now, you know, coming back from overseas, being able to come home to my parents and, and seeing them. And it was rough being away from them for a few months, but yeah, yeah. It's, I was always ready to get to come back home and get to see them and get to see all my friends just to, and the rest of my family just to catch up with everybody. So it's been amazing. Yeah, man. So how did you get into the game of basketball, man? Because everybody knows the Jamie Cherry, <laughs> the, the boom. So tell us about the, the start of Jamie Cherry. Oh, I mean, obviously, my love for the game, it, it came from my dad, who played basketball at West Craven as well. Um, just it being a family thing, and with me and my dad, we started outside, you know, shooting basketball in the hoop, and one day I was outside playing in the snow, and from that day on, I just kept playing. That's when I knew that basketball was going to be my thing, and I loved it from, that, from uh, then, so... Just uh, started at that young age yeah. and continued to get better each and every year um, was definitely the stepping stone for who I am today. Yeah. What was the motivation? What was the drive? What made you wake up and say, "Look, I I, I want to do this basketball. I want to be. I want to be great." Um, I think it was just you know, obviously seeing my parents. You know, they they go to work every day. They work hard. They grind. They love what they do. Um was definitely motivation for me and me finding basketball and just me sticking to that, not quitting and um, just continue to get better for that. Obviously, I grew up in a basketball community, so basketball yeah. is huge around here. And then me as well, like all my friends playing basketball and us just playing together every day, getting, getting better, pushing each other. That's definitely motivation for me. And then obviously me growing up uh, loving UNC, that was definitely a huge goal for me. So me motivating myself every day, telling myself that I, I was going to play at the University of North Carolina and I could do it, um, it really pushed me. So that yeah. was definitely some of the major things that pushed me. Yeah, so the goal to play at UNC. Right. Right. And then your seven, eight grade year, I mean, you're only 13 years old. You get that call saying, hey, look, this is your dream school that we put it on the table. How did that feel? It, it was amazing, you know, just to think about all the hard work that I put in at a young age. I mean, obviously, my parents gave up a lot, taking me up and down the road to Raleigh to train, to play AU basketball, because there wasn't really, at that time, any AU teams around here yeah. who were able to put me in that setting in front of college coaches. So, mm -hmm. me playing on the Garden Flames and going up to Raleigh every weekend, sometimes during the week to practice, and during the summer, play AU games all around the world in front of coaches was definitely a, a major stepping stone for me into being able to get that college scholarship. So I think that was one of the major differences was playing AAU basketball, getting myself put out there. And my parents, you know, just, just giving their everything and pouring in all their energy, time, money into 
yeah. to being able to take me up there, take me to all the training sessions that I needed to, to go, no matter when, how much money it cost, anything, and just put in all the, the time for it. So I think that was that was definitely major for me being able to get those college college scholarships. Yeah. So not not being satisfied right. after the scholarship because yeah, you got it so yeah. early yeah. at the age of thirteen, and then right. just taking it to a whole other level right. at West Craven High School. Talking right. about stepping into West Craven High School, knowing that you are going into a girls' program that's not that's not up at the level yet, but you right. got to you got to bring it back. Right. I think. The family that I have, we're never satisfied with anything. Always hungry, always trying to get better, always trying to get something better. Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely major for me just seeing that, growing up in that. But, I mean, when I was in middle school, you know, I obviously I played on a, a great middle school team. Yeah. I mean, girls around me were amazing. Hey, they won a championship in middle school, yeah. too. The girls around me were amazing. So, me being able to be around them and us all getting better and then, obviously, you, Josh, uh, Red, Demetrius, all of us, we, yeah. you know, we're in the gym growing up. We're, we're working out all the time, playing. So, I mean, that's definitely what helped groom me. And yeah. then, you know, us, the girls in the middle school, we're going up to the high school. I mean, and obviously, at that time, West Craven, um, they weren't that great. But, I mean, that, that really didn't scare me. I, know. I knew that with, F, with, um, with Tom and yeah. work, that we can build it, we can get better, and we can put West Craven back on the map like they were supposed to be. Yes, and um, obviously, we did in my four years, which were amazing. Um, and we did some incredible things out there. So yeah. yeah. So talk about the legacy you left at West Craven. Right. Three thousand points, the most ever as a girl at West Craven. Right. Thirty and one. The best record ever as female in favor. Like you did so many things in those four years. Talk about how that felt with those group of girls and with Coach Fernandez. Talk about that whole family. I mean, obviously Fernandez. He the, his first year was my freshman year, and I thought Fernandez did an amazing job throughout my four years. He kind of came in. He kind of changed the culture of how West Craven basketball was supposed to be, and um, he kind of bought family into it. Yeah. So it's kind of like a family thing, even with the guys. Like, we all were one big family. Yeah. Like, so, I think Fernandez was definitely one of the major steps in making us better. And then, um, obviously, I thought once my, um, the, my group of girls, we got to the high school, we tried to, you know, bring that hard work and ethic up yeah. to, to the high school. And I think once everybody, like, saw what we were doing and everybody started to to get a little taste of what it felt like of hard work and, yeah. and stuff like that everybody started to jump on board and i think that was that was major for us because once everybody jumped on board and we started to you know build team chemistry and chemistry and everybody started to hang out yeah it was it was amazing we we started to win we started to win, we started to win and, mm -hmm. and that wasn't normal yeah before. So we start. Everybody started to get a taste of the, of winning, and and, just, and then it just started trickling yeah. down to every person. Everybody wanted to get better. Cause you want to keep winning. Everybody wanted to keep winning. We kept pushing each other, and I mean, obviously, Coach Fernandez was major for me because um, he would push me every day. He allowed I had access to the gym. He allowed me to get better if I needed to go to training sessions. He allowed me to do that. So it, for him, it wasn't okay. Let me just hold you here. Let me just keep yeah. you here. It was. Whatever you need to get better, you go do it. Whatever Spanish you need from me, whatever you need from me, I'm here. I'll do whatever it takes for you. So um, he was definitely major. Yeah. For us. That's what's up, man. Yeah. So leaving West Craven High School and going to the University of North Carolina. I, I, I'm deep now. I'm not down, but going to the University of North Carolina. Yeah. Amazing university. Amazing school. Right. How did you? How when you first stepped North Carolina? How did you want to? Start off. How did you want to? How did you want to send yourself in? Right. It was. It was definitely surreal because you know, obviously, that was my dream school. So it was. It was amazing. Just for my first time there, I really, I had to sit and think, like, wow, I really made it to the university. Yeah. Like, especially, I mean, it's hard for for kids from where we are from Newburgh. It's hard to you know to make those dreams come true. Yeah. And, I, and I did it. So and I always said that I would do it. So yeah. it, for me, when I first got there, it was just like, wow, I really made it here. 
Like I was really thankful that I made it here. I was blessed because yeah. not many get that opportunity. So when I got the opportunity, I couldn't pass it down. So when I got there, it was it was just what I gotta stay here. Whatever I have to do to stay here. Whatever I have to do to get better. And my first practice, I was a little nervous, but you know, I'm like, wow, I made it here. So obviously, I'm I'm okay if I'm here. Yeah. So, I just need to get out here and compete and get better. Yes, ma'am. So. so how how did it change you? Did you matter that? Hold on, before I say how did it change you? Did you see any difference from being the leader at high school, at West Cameron High School, and then come, becoming and being the leader in college? I mean, most definitely. I mean, it's de it's definitely a different transition from high school to college because in college, it's, it's definitely a faster pace. Everything is is faster. It's grasping. You have to grasp on it quick. So, yeah. I mean, I was a freshman coming into a lot, and I was the only freshman. Mm. So, I had to pick up on everything faster than I was. You were the only freshman that came in? The only freshman that came in. So, oh, I had man. to pick up on everything faster than I normally probably would have to if I was with a group of other freshmen. Other freshmen. So, it was, a, it was a quite different in that part. And I was a point guard. So, as a point guard, you have to know everything. You have to come in. You have to know your position, the wings position, the post position. Yeah. You have to, you, it's like you're another coach on the floor. So, for me, that, that was a lot for me my freshman year. But I thought that I did a great job of trying to grasp everything. And, you know, at that as a freshman, you're still trying to find yourself. So, yeah. as well, as I'm still trying to find myself off the court as well as on the court. As well as on the court, so, yeah. I mean, it was definitely a lot, but I feel like um, I dealt with the pressure pretty well. Yeah. So did it, did, did the college change you as a person? Um, I don't believe so. I think I grew up. You know, that was one of. I mean, obviously I played for City Hatcher, so that was one of her main things. You know, she's the girls are coming in, and we, we need to leave as women. So yeah. I think I did a lot of grooming in college, and you know, maturing and getting better. I mean, obviously you're playing basketball at a major university so every it's not quite the same as you just going to school yeah. so for me it was it was kind of different in, in, in ways maybe I've changed a little bit but I think I've got smarter you know more mature but I don't think college has changed me as like person that's who yeah. I am like I feel like I'm still the same person you know but yeah I feel you so going from college and then Keep reaching, you right. keep reaching your dreams because now you're a pro. Right. So talk talk about that because most most kids, man, they they dream this stuff out and they be like, all right, I'm going to college, right? I'm going to be a pro, but no, never have like that. You right. you went to your dream school, you're a professional basketball player. So talk about all that, man. Talk about being a professional. Um, it's definitely different. It's different from college, you know. Um, obviously, but some people don't pursue their dreams after college, yeah. which, I mean, I love the game of basketball, so I just, I knew I wanted to continue to play, and my ultimate goal is WNBA, so whatever it takes, I have to go overseas, you know, take a different path, you know, whatever it takes to get to the WNBA is always the ultimate goal, yes, so right. going overseas and playing basketball, that's a stepping stone until I reach the final goal, which is, is WNBA, mm -hmm. so I think coming out of college, you know, I, right away I didn't get to pursue my dream as WNBA. But I knew that I could take another route to get there. So yes, I'd go overseas and play basketball, you know, do what I have to do overseas. And which, overseas is a great opportunity because not only do I get to, you know, play basketball, but I get to travel the world and see yes, different places of the world that not many people get an opportunity to do. So I think that's probably one of the major pluses about playing overseas, going to another country, you know, living there, you know, seeing their culture and, you know, how they do things there. And that, I mean, that. That's one of the things I like about, you know, playing overseas. And, of course, um, basketball is my job, so I'm playing basketball every day. So, I mean, definitely overseas, you know, it's different, but um, it's very good. Yes, ma'am. So, you done seen all levels of the game. Right. Middle school, high school, AAU, college, professional basketball. Right. Talk, what, what's, what's the main difference of all of it from you growing up until you met? Um, major difference is probably, mm, I don't know, major, from younger to pro. Yeah, from, from Jamie Che with the goggles. Oh, man. Then y'all don't know nothing about Jamie Che right. with the goggles. Not many people know about <laughs> Not many people know 
The Jamie Cherry with the goggles. From Jamie Cherry from the goggles to the professional Jamie Cherry. What do you see a difference in, in yourself as a basketball? Um, a lot smarter than I think now I kinda have a more all around game than I did when I was younger. You know, when I was younger I did certain certain stuff well. Like uh over in each stepping stone I feel like I've gotten better in one area of my game and to now pro it's kinda became an overall. Mm -hmm. I've learned how you I I know that different parts of my game need an improvement. And now that I'm a pro, I feel like all of it's coming together because I've had the time to work on it. And I've played against different talent or players to know what I needed to work on. Yes, ma'am. So I think now, overall, I'm a lot smarter with the game. My IQ is probably a lot better than what it was. And I think just all around, my game has improved. So I'm able to do things that I wasn't able to do when I was younger. So I think that part of the game, it, it, it's just different. Like now I'm a pro, I realize, you know, back then we didn't really care what we ate about our diet. We ate McDonald's, yeah. we ate all that crap. Yeah. And now you can't put that in your body. Yes, ma'am. Not to be a great athlete, you can't. Not to be able to, to do what I do now, I can't put that crap in my you body. So I, think, exactly. so I think that aspect of it, you know, diet, you know, stretching. We didn't we used to yeah. like stretching yes, that. Yes, ma'am. Now, as I'm older, Stretching is very important. Yeah. If I don't stretch, I can't get on the court. I'm yes, not able to, you know, just get out there like the young kids. You know, they just step on the court. And just go. And just go. Yeah. I can't just get out there and just go. My, my body is not going to let me just get out there and just go. <laughs> so I think that's a, a major thing, you know, stretching, diet, everything. So just all around aspects of the game is, is, is different now. I know a lot more than I knew back then. So if I knew... Now, what I know now back then, I probably would have changed a lot of yeah. what I did back then. But, you know, knowledge is power. So, yes, ma'am. Yes, so, ma'am. Now it's just be, being smart about it. And, you know, as I get older, just continue to, as long as, uh, as much as I play, just keep being smarter. I mean, the longer I want, want to play, you know, I have to keep my body healthy yes, for longevity. So. You know, now that it's quarantine right now, that we're in quarantine. You got go, plenty of time. Got plenty of time <laughs> to make sure my body is right. Yes, I'm eating healthy. I'm stretching. I'm doing what I need to do. And I think this is well needed for me, especially coming off of a long overseas season of doing yeah. nine months of back to back. So I think this is this is what this, this, this needed. Is, yeah, this <laughs> is the doctor order. I needed. This. I, I needed this. So tell me for my personal question of the day. Mm -hmm. Who, if you can name a female that you played with on your uh -huh. team and that you played against, name them. Who was the best? The, the best female that you played with as played a teammate okay. and the best female that you played against as an opponent. The best teammate I played with, I think, was Jamie Cherry. It's actually, it's probably, it's actually a tie. Yeah, you give me the two. It's a tie between Alicia Gray and Stephanie Bumbugger. No, that's probably, that probably both the, Carolina. Both Carolina. That's probably mm -hmm. the best teammates I've played with. Most definitely, probably the best teammates I've played. Now who? With. Now who, who? Who was the? Who was the girl that 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 that, that you stepped across and like, man? I see a lot of her in me. I got to. I got to bring my A game. The best player I probably played against. I don't know. That was a tough one. I played in ACC. So yeah, I know you. Everybody, everybody's pretty great. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Um, no, it don't have to be ACC. It could be high school, AAU. No, nah, it's definitely, it's definitely in college. It's in the college. It's definitely college. I don't know. That's that is a tough one because I will say that is a tough one because I played against a lot of great players. Give me, give me, give me a lot of great give. players. Like you have to, think, <laughs> you, you have to think I played against. I Jim know. Boy, Caleb McBride. Yeah, but it got to um, be, it got to be that one I, girl that stepped above all of them that when you played them, it's like. This girl is my, this girl is my challenge. I got to bring my A game. I got to bring the Man. best. She brings the best out of me. It got to be that one that you step across. Man, I don't. <sighs> that is tough because a lot of the girls that I played against are in the league right now. Mm. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. You played ACC. That's so. what I'm saying. They're, yeah. in, they're in the league right now. So it that it, it. I mean, I could name you, Jewel Lord, Enrique. Oh, Notre Dame girls, Duke girls. Yeah. I, I played against Elizabeth Williams, Chelsea Gray. I mean, you got to you gotta think. What? I played against talent. Talent, talent. Girl, I played against 
a lot of girls who are in the WBA, Syracuse, every, yeah. it's a lot, it's not, I wouldn't say it's no specific person that, I don't know, I put Kelsey Mitchell, probably, kept, for my position, probably Kelsey Mitchell, tough, dog, dog. What's probably, next? What's probably, next? Maybe her, the probably dog. What's next? I don't know. Let's, after this quarantine, <laughs> I, I guess we'll figure it out. What's, what's next? next? What's next? What's next? To get over this quarantine so I yes, see ma'am. what's going to happen. Uh, every day is up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen right now. Yes, so ma'am. I yes, guess ma'am. we'll just have to see. I guess y'all have to stay tuned. <laughs> this <laughs> is next episode for whoever it is. <laughs> Follow me on Facebook, I guess you'll see yeah. what's next. Hey, follow on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you'll see how I see what's next for Chain Me Chain. Yes, man. Well, there y'all have it, y'all. The end of the 12th episode with my special guest, Jamie Chain. We out. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching the Joshua Coverson Show. Please continue to show your love and support by clicking the subscribe button below the video. Check us out next week on the next episode of the Josh Coverson Show. We out.